music was very fine and elevating to all of you. The effect of music in Sahaja Yoga is tremendous. And if a Sahaja Yogi sings the song, it's so great that it acts like a mantra upon my being. So I am very thankful to Mrs. Vinugopala for singing such a beautiful song today. It stirred me completely. Then Gavin Brown was very sweet. He is an English man, very gentle and very steady surgery. He is one of the first Western surgeries I met. Today I will tell you about the Navi Chakra, which deals with this honesty of seeking. Navi Chakra is the center which controls or manifests outside in the gross as solar plexus. Navi Chakra has two sides. One is the left, another the right, and one in the center. So on the left hand side is the Graha Lakshmi, on the right hand side is the Raja Lakshmi or Gaja Lakshmi, and in the center is the Lakshmi which ascends into Mahalakshmi. When the seeking starts, a human being first starts seeking food. Food is very important for all the animals. If they have no food, then they cannot exist. So the seeking starts with food and when the shelter is sought, they try to find the water. So the center is made of water and in this center recites the deity of Sri Vishnu or Narayana. And his power, as I told you, is Lakshmi and then Mahalakshmi. You will find out in Sahaja Yoga that gradually you start developing one power and then the other. Everyone who comes to Sahaja Yoga, if they are truthful and not involved with any wrong things, then definitely they are helped in Lakshmi Tattva, means their well-being is looked after. As Krishna has said, Yoga Kshema Vaham Meha. So he looks after the Kshema part of Everyone who has been to Sahaja Yoga has been helped miraculously also in the Lakshmi Tattva, that means material. In so many ways they are helped that one has to just see for themselves how these miracles take place. An example is of a villager who had a small little holding of land and he was living hand to mouth every day. When he came to me, after some time I found he would bring one garland, big garland for me every evening. And he was away in the village, every day he would attend my program. I was quite surprised that how could he afford it? And I asked him, uh, how can you afford a garland for me every day? You shouldn't bring it, it's not proper. So he said, Mother, you know everything. 
I said, why, well, what happened? He said, I have a plot of land next to mine which we never used because it was absolutely a barren land, little bit, not much big land but a small land, piece of land. And I, after realization I used to always go walk over it bare feet to plow this little piece of land that I have. After some time, when I was coming here after that, one gentleman came to see me and he said that this piece of land that you have is very precious. He said, what's the problem? He said that I have a tin of bricks and I have seen that even by chance, Sahaja, we mixed a little clay from this soil, from this part of the land that you have and we found that our bricks have become so good and so strong that we would like to purchase this clay from you at the price of Sears. And that's how we started getting money sufficient for him and he became much better off. But in Sahaja Yoga one has to remember you don't go to extremes in any principle. That is one thing people should know, that you don't go to extremes. You don't become extremely rich. I've seen those people who are extremely rich when they come to Sahaja Yoga, they are a big headache, very big headache. If they are sick, if you cure them of their heart trouble, then they try to possess you. They will get all the heart patients, they will get all kinds of patients to you. You go on tolerating it, they try to possess you, they immediately start talking about their cures to everyone, they publish in papers, this thing, that thing. It's impossible. And they just try to overpower you, without any appointment they'll arrive and they would expect you to attend to them immediately. It's terrible. And then they'll send all the relations for cure. And you have to show all patients, all their friends, they become like agents. All their patients, all their relations, all their friends, they want to oblige them and spare me. No love, no affection, nothing for me. Uh, the Sahaja Yogis, if they try to say that, no, you shouldn't like you, like that and all that, they feel insulted. And they all try curing much faster than anybody else does. They themselves are weak, they are sick people themselves, heart patients, this patient, that. But if you tell them, don't cure, they feel bad. If you don't tell them, they'll get sick and you'll have another problem. They never try to understand Sahaja Yoga in its big way. They just want to see it according to their own way of uh, ego that they have accumulated with their money. And they never know how they go on hurting <coughs> everyone by overpowering me all the time. It's very amazing. Whenever I've cured a rich man, I've been wanting to run away with that, from that person. I would never go to their house, I would not like to eat in their house. It's a very bad thing. So, too much of richness is also not good because it gives you a tremendous ego that you don't see yourself and anybody tries to say anything, protect oneself, then such a person feels it, insulted or humiliated. Not only that, but they try to mold me and mold the whole thing according to their business ways, which is impossible. See, they have to gain money, they have another attitude because they earn money. I don't have to earn money or anything. If I am doing anything, I am really, in a way, I am obliging, isn't it? But they will force on me all their rules and regulations, everything, without having their own disciplines. So very rich people in Sahaja Yoga so far have been extremely troublesome, I should say to me and to the whole organization. They are very narrow-minded, uh, they cannot see the big vision that I have before me. 
whatever little their ideas they have about themselves or about their own thinking, reading, they will try to push on to surgery. It's not my experience once, but many a times. Then some or other, it so happens that they drop. So too much richness gives you a tremendous ego worse than even, I would say, a bulldog. It's impossible for a rich man to see that all these riches are outside him, they are not inside him. He has to be rich in heart to understand compassion. Compassion doesn't mean that you give alms to others or if you give money to others, it's not that. On the contrary, you just help beggars by doing that. Compassion is that works. Compassion is that flows. Compassion is that manifests. It is not in compassion where you can make it materialize it all right, come along, I'll give you a hundred rupees. On the contrary, giving somebody hundred rupees is the worst. I have tried this with some surgeries who were with me. I tried to give them some money, sometimes they were very, very poor. They became horrid. Uh, some of them started drinking, some of them took to some other ways and they became sort of addicted to money. It was impossible. And they tried to spoil as many surgeries as they could. So such people, if they come, it's impossible to manage them. They are not Sahaja yogis because they are Asahaja. They are still sticking on to the idea that they have so much money, that they are so rich and they can overpower everyone with money. Not me, I am sorry. But only thing I feel sorry for them that they cannot get to God. There is no honesty of seeking in them. There is no honesty of seeking. The elite people whom I have addressed so many places like this because some people whom I have cured wanted me to address the elite so-called, I think they are elated to be what they are. They don't want to be in Sahaja Yoga. They are already eliminated, I sometimes feel. Thousands of them I have addressed, I have wasted my time with them. They are good for nothing, absolutely empty. They are very happy because they have few cars or some houses or something like that. I too have all these things, I would say, uh, so-called riches I have always seen from my father's side and from my husband's side. But I don't understand what is there to be proud of this emptiness. But human beings are such. A empty vessel makes a big sound, in the same way, an empty rich man makes a very big sound. Not that the very poor are also good, because those who are extremely poor are busy with their food problems. They have little, little problems and their values are still have to come up to a point. It's only in the middle you can work out Sahaja Yoga better. Those who are extremely rich and proud cannot come to Sahaja easily. Those who are very poor also cannot come to Sahaja. But when this middle part of the river is enriched and starts flowing well, it spreads on the sides and then it can engulf. But you cannot start it the other way round. I have tried. I have tried both ways. And I have told you what happened, whom I gave money, whom I tried to help through giving money, became wavered, useless, frivolous people, got lost to Sahaja Yoga. And those whom I thought were moneyed and satisfied people had another role to play, is to possess me all the time, to use me all the time whenever they wanted, for whatever purpose they wanted, purpose they wanted to use me. And they must know, you cannot possess Me, you cannot possess Me. But this kind of an ignorance still in their minds is that they can possess God, they can possess everything. For such people there are 
no reasons to come to Sahaja Yoga, to be very frank. And even if they come to Sahaja Yoga, they have to know that for Mother, richness of heart, understanding of Sahaja Yoga, humility, non-possessiveness are very important. In this sir, ascent of yours, money is not important at all. Even if you are poor or rich, you get your realization. For example, I went to Maharashtra, most of them are, I would say, very poor people in the sense that they are not middle class at all, they are not educated. They are sometimes factory workers or they are they have small holdings, not very rich. But they are very good surgeons, excellent surgeons. They have such beautiful eyes and such beautiful feeling and such compassion that Lakshmi Tattva is absolutely balanced in them. You know that Lakshmi is shown to be a lady, and lady who is a mother. Mother doesn't care whether you are rich or poor. If her one son is rich and another is poor, she will pay more attention to the poor and ask the rich to give his money to the poor also. She is not bothered. If somebody is in need, she will be the first to help the person who needs. Now this is a spiritual thing in the spiritual life. The person who is a real seeker, who is a truthful seeker, the mother will go out of the way to be with that person. And those who are not honest about it, mother will try some or other cut them short. The problem that lies with human beings is that they do not know what they want. They think they want, first of all, money. But those who have money, they think they must have power. If they have too much money, they think they must go into politics because they have had no power. Then they fail in politics or say they become too much in politics, whatever it is, then they want love from their children, which they can't get because they are too busy or something like that. So they don't know what they want. Those who believe that by having money we'll be better off should listen to all these people who have come from affluent countries and they will tell you how things have gone wrong there, how people are doing, what's going wrong with them. Absolutely they are in a bad shape. You cannot call them human beings because they are so cruel, they kill even their own children and that society tolerates such people. In India, if you hear somebody killing a child, I have never heard so far so many sixty years of my life, but supposing you hear someone has killed his daughter or son, nobody will ever look at that person, he will not be allowed in the society, nobody will even uh, give any girl in the marriage to such a, uh, I mean, uh, to his daughter or a son, he will be absolutely barred from the society. No one can think of such a relationship between children and parents. And then there are funny relationships also. It's something so absurd on both the sides, on cruelty and on morality. They are so absurd, it's impossible to understand. So money has given this ego and they say, what's wrong? What's wrong? It's absolutely malignant attitude. When you say, what's wrong, that means you do not want to keep your relationship with the whole. You do not want to keep your relationship with the primordial one, the one who has you, everyone within himself. We are part and parcel of the whole. And how can you say, what's wrong? I'll do what I like. You just become like a malignant self. So at the Navi Chakra one has to know that one should not hanker after money too much. Now those who hanker too much after money may develop 
their right side better, they may have money, no doubt. But they miss their left side. Left side is Grahalakshmi. They have no Grahalakshmi in their house. They are very hectic people, they run about, they run the rat race, they get heart attacks. If not heart attacks, they will get leukemia, they will get diabetes, liver, all such things. Because their attention is on money and not on God. So either you are on the right or on the left. Those who are very emotional people, extremely emotional, more worried about their family, for them family is everything, the relations are everything, they are like that, they may not have so much of Lakshmi because they distribute all the Lakshmi, but still they are better people. But sometimes such people who sacrifice so much for others, give up everything that they have, can become crazy because they will find people do not reciprocate, they do not return their love, they do not understand what they have done. So going to the extreme of helping others can cause trouble to the person who does this job and also trouble to people who have taken free money from him. Because if you distribute free money to people, what will happen? I'll give you a simple example of America helping India. When Americans help India, they thought they were doing a great favor to India, which was wrong, because whatever they built, whatever they did was lost. In the wilderness, nobody tried to maintain it, it was free. But while giving that, they showed a contempt. And when they gave some wheat and rice to India, there was no grace about it because they put some sort of a seed in it which created two horrible things in the villages. One was called as Congress grass because it came from America. And the another one was called as a mad acacia, baboon as we call it, mad baboon. These trees have grown so much in the villages that they don't know what to do with them. They have such big, big horns and anybody who is stung by them can even die. They are very poisonous and if the children get it, they get such poisonous uh, problems that they cannot be cured. This is how American government has helped us. Now who is going to tell them what you have done so ungraciously? It was better to starve than to get any help from anyone. Long time back I had said that it is better to starve in this country than to get any help from these wretched, horrible Western countries who think and under themselves. You just pamper them, you go for nothing at all. What have they got? They have just plastic affluence. But this ego out of money makes them so stupid that they don't know what's happening in their own country, how their country is going down in every way, how their people are going down. Either they are in fear or they are abandoned. Otherwise, they are communists or they are so-called uh, capitalists where they are just abandoned. If you go and see in that country, I mean you can't sit like this anywhere and talk in the outside, somebody might come and murder someone. If you walk in the dark, you can be murdered in America, so-called advanced country of America in New York City. So this kind of riches we are trying to aspire, especially people in Delhi are very anxious to aspire a lot of money. I don't know how, why Punjabis, Gujaratis and Marwadis have taken to this. Marwadi is another style. Now the Punjabis and the Gujaratis are trying to acquire the money. And when I see them abroad, <laughs> I just don't know if they are anywhere near India. Horrid. They have no culture left in them, that is it. They are absolutely uprooted. They think no end of themselves, they think they have reached the heavens. Then if you see their Navi chakra, you will be amazed. All of them suffer from horrible river, high blood pressure, diabetes, heart attacks, and they drink like fish. Especially Sardarjis, I was surprised who are supposed to be in the name of God. 
they drink like fish. They are very particular about wearing a pagli and a dadi, but while drinking they don't mind. Every sardarji you go to has a big bar in his house where even a lord does not have because regarded as very vulgar in England. Without learning any aesthetics of that country, they have become just like agriculture. There is no culture. It's a fact. This is what money has done to them, they have no respect for themselves. So this Lakshmi Tattva is to be balanced. Same about these Gujaratis who are born. Another kind lives here, the Marwadis. Let's say the better about these horrible Marwadis. I don't think any one of them will ever get realization or a place in the kingdom of God. This, they are blood suckers. They are not human beings. For money's sake they suck the blood like Jews suck the blood and now they had a nice time. This is not a world for you to seek money. You have come on this earth as a human being to seek God, to seek your spirit, to be one with yourself, to be in that peaceful place which is the kingdom of God which is the kingdom of heaven, and not to jump into a maya which looks very beautiful but is not really beautiful. It's agonizing, it's terrorizing. People can't sleep if they have too much money because they don't know what to do with that. Here also all those who have got money, they don't know when the income tax will come on them. I have solved my income tax problem by having no income at all. <laughs> I have no income, no income tax. So I am not worried about the income tax commissioner. <laughs> he cannot control me. Best is not to have more income that is to be taxed. Otherwise you will have to have another income tax uh, lawyer that my brother is. I told him, I don't need you at all, all my life, thank you very much. <laughs> you get so… you get absolutely free on top of the world if you have no income. Like if you, if you want to solve your drive, car problem, never learn driving. Somebody drives you down or nothing, you can walk with your feet. The accumulation of all these nonsensical things have caused us all this tension so far. How much we have to pay? What is the income tax? Tomorrow the police is going to come in my house. If they come to me, I'll say, all right, have everything that you have. Nothing there. Certain bills which I have not paid, that's all. Which let them pay? One has to live with complete freedom in this world. And to achieve that freedom, one has to know that the priority should be all right. If money is your priority, you have it. No, not me. If you want to give me money, no, sir, I won't, at any cost. You can give me flowers, is that all right? But no money at all. I don't want to know about money at all. It's a headache. In the same way, we do not realize that <coughs> having relationships, brothers, sisters, and this and that, is another big headache. That doesn't mean that you start beating them. But people can sell their country for the sake of their children. It's a very dangerous thing, horrible, that kind of an attachment, the mamatva, this is my son, finished. If he's your son, then you can murder anyone you feel like, you can do what you like because he's your son. He's not somebody's son whom you are murdering. This mamatva that comes, my husband, especially our Indian women, my husband immediately starts problem. 
All this comes out of ignorance. Of course, love the, has to be there, but love never gives you attachment because it is wise, it is wisdom. Supposing in a tree, the sap of the tree goes and gets fixed in one fruit because it loves its mind, then what happens to the rest of the tree? It dies and that fruit also dies. So this mamatva has to go out. But by telling it will not go, by just advising you it will not go, even if you suffer. I have seen so many people coming to Me, My own father deceived Me, My own son deceived Me. I said, which one is your own? The one who deceived you is not your own. My husband, there are some ladies who eat My head out of their husbands. My husband did this, My husband did this, My husband did this. Baba, why don't you hit him hard and finish with it? <laughs> but it's so much accepted this mamatva, this attachment. Attachment to money, attachment to people, attachment to this is nothing but a hook which hooks you to baser levels. You have to rise above this. And then you really enjoy the beauty of richness. As I told you the other day, I see all beautiful things, it's nice I don't possess them. See, now these carpets are spread here. If they were Mine, I should worry, Oh God, now I hope they are not going to be spoiled. I hope nobody sits on them. I hope they are insured <laughs> so nobody runs away with them. But when they don't belong to Me, I'm enjoying them better. Other people's things is a better idea. This myth carries us to such an extent of stupidity that sometimes I feel whether these human beings are human beings or they are their possessions. Their spirit is lost, everything is lost, they are not bothered, but if their little possession is lost, they weep and wail and as if they are dead, their forefathers are dead hundred times. But people like Me are just bachas, emperors. They are not bothered. To them, comfort cannot capture them. They don't need any comfort. If you have comfort, it falls upon you. It makes you a slave too. If you seek comfort, you are in for enslavement. Take it from you. Any kind of comfort. It's only human beings who can become really so crazy. No animal can become. There's another type of a comfort is that a mental idea that everybody must appreciate and that you should be able to overpower others. This also comes, I think, from Nabhichar. It's a kind of a feeling that you should be able to overpower many people, they should not look at you. These days in London there are women who are suffering from a funny disease called anorexia where they just don't eat. Women just don't eat because they should be thin and skinny. For what? For what you should be thin and skinny? Because you look attractive. But for what? I don't think skinny people look attractive by any chance. Horrible thing. They create only pity in you I, I, and you feel, you know, repulsive about the whole stuff. Once a beauty came, queen came to see Me, I thought she, she was a TB patient. <laughs> and I said, well, you look all right, but it seems you are a TB patient. She said, no, Mother, I've got a beauty prize. I said, eh? Who were the people? Doctors must have given it because they want some patients there. 
this is the trouble. We go out of the way to trouble our Nabi, not to eat your food, fasting. If you want to fast this life, next life you will not have any food. Thank you very much. <laughs> no food. Fasting, all right. You will have a permanent fasting. What do you say? You don't have to do any fasting. Why do you want to fast? And even if you want to fast because you want to change the timing or maybe for your health sake, it's all right. But why in the name of God you want to malign Him? You have got everything to eat and you don't want to eat. Those who have got food to eat, they don't want to eat. Next life they become poor and then they blame the rich. But in last life you did wanted to fast. So this life you are not given any food because you ask for it. And that is how also the Nabi Chakra gets you twisted when you fast like mad. There is no need to fast in the name of God. God has given you all the wealth, all the beauty, all the love. Actually, in Sahaja Yoga, if you fast in my name, I think it's horrible because if you want to trouble your mother or to make her uneasy or take a revenge on her, then you say, Mother, I'm not going to eat my food. Then mother is finished. That's the best way to conquer her, to say, Mother, I'm not going to eat my food. So this kind of effect, mad fasting is also very bad for your nabi. And when you do that, then you have a problem because you are invaded by your left-sided, uh, what you call the beyond the Ira Nadi, you have the collective subconscious and you are invaded by them and you are in for trouble, physically, mentally, emotionally. And mostly those people who fast are very hot. -tuck. The day their fasting day is there, never go near them because they are already planning what they are going to eat. <laughs> And in the morning they plan and they don't get it, so they are very angry for that one. All these asahaja things are not going to help you. You have to be normal people. You don't have to put up into tension yourself for Sahaja Yoga, nothing. Be normal. Be nice people. Don't torture yourself. That is one point on the Nabi on the left hand side and on the right hand side don't get into indulgences. Don't pamper yourself. Both things are the same for Sahaja Yoga, whether you starve or you overeat. It's the same. There is no difference between the two. Because if you are not on the seat, whether you are on the left falling or the right, does it make any difference? So to be on the seat is to be in the blessings of Sri Lakshmi, and I have described to you how Sri Lakshmi is a lady. And in her left hand she has got two lotuses and the right one lotus and right hand another lotus on top. It shows a person who is balancing. She's balancing on a lotus. Imagine she's standing on a lotus. That means she's balancing. And she's balancing, she's standing there, and she is holding two lotuses in her hand, showing that she is like a lotus. A person who is a rich man, Lakshmi Pati, has to be like a lotus, warm, pink, warm. And even a horrible thing like Madhukar ko kya kaka angrezi mein? wasp-like thing. I don't know what you call in English, you don't have that black thing. Uh, we have a very big black wasp, you see, which is hard, hard like nut and has angular thorny legs. That black thing comes in, bhavra, and is good for nothing, but comes in for the residence, for the ashraya, the lotus keeps it 
on top of its karma, which is a very, very soft thing, with all love. And in the night it closes down so that the poor insect, who is just like a gnat, should not get any trouble from the outside weather. Like a mother who takes the child in the archer, that love should be there for a Lakshmi Pati. How many are Lakshmi Patis like that? Have you seen any? If they see somebody who is coming with money propositions, then they may open their doors. Otherwise, they have no love for anyone else. And those who come to for their ashrayas, for their help, they are not there. On the other side are the people who are so repulsive, they are not like lotus, there is no fragrance, they are such miserly people that they stink of miserliness, while the lotus gives its fragrance through that mud, through that horrible thing, that evil the little worms which crawl upon those lotus petals smell of those beautiful fragrance. This is what it has to be. It has to give. It has to be beautiful. It has to be cozy. It has to be welcome. Then another hand is giving. And Lakshmi is always giving, she doesn't receive, she just gives. If you are really a Lakshmi Pati, you don't want to have anything from anyone, you don't receive. If you are really rich, who can enrich you more? What can you give to a person who is fully rich? There's no way of entering into it. Now it's all up to the brim. He is rich up to the brim, then what will you give? You cannot give anything. But where you have to give means that she is a beggar, he is still a beggar. All these so-called rich people who still are hankering money are still beggars, they are not rich. They may think themselves empty vessels, but they are not rich because they are still expecting money. So it is important that we should understand the money is not the way. Money takes us away from dharma, it takes us away from God, it takes us away from reality, it covers our eyes. We don't think that we have to follow a path of righteousness and of virtue because we think we are rich, God is going to be afraid of us. We can even purchase Him and can manage Him by giving some bribes. That's not so. You must face yourself. You have to face yourself that it's not the money that's going to give you that elation, that higher life. But it is the love of God, the honesty of seeking, honesty. That is the quality of this chakra is the Satya. Vishnu is the Satya. He is the Narayana. Narayana means Satya. So there cannot be Satya Narayana, isn't it? Narayana is Satya, then how can there be Satya Narayana? But we have many Satya Narayana pujas. For all these Satya Narayanas, Sahaja Yogis are not supposed to go. They can only go to Narayana puja. Because Satya Narayana means that part which is added to it for camouflaging is meant for these horrible Brahmins who make you pay. For what? So Sahaja Yogis are not allowed to go to Satya Narayana Puja, they can have Narayana Puja. And what is Narayana ultimately becomes? In the Nabi Chakra, Narayana existed since he was created by the Devi. And it looks after the seeking 
the nourishing of the seeking like a father, and then it incarnates again and again and again to help our seeking to a higher position and a higher position till it reaches a point where you start seeking God Almighty. Then you jump into the Shakti of Maharaj. Then you are in the hands of Mahalakshmi Shakti. Means Lakshmi evolves into Mahalakshmi principle. Now this Mahalakshmi principle resides in the central path of Sushumna. And this central path of Sushumna is to be established fully or awakened when the Kundalini rises. When the Kundalini does not rise, this path is kept absolutely blank. It is absolutely blank. There is nothing in it except for the deities who are lying without any light. When the Kundalini rises, then only these deities get awakened. And when they get awakened, this Sushumna path, this central path of Mahalakshmi starts acting as the balancing power to begin with at the Navi Chakra. So Navi Chakra is surrounded by ten gurus, the prophets who give you the balance, who come on this earth again and again to give you balance in life. They tell you, don't do this, don't do that. But we don't listen to them. We don't accept them. We may say that we follow such guru, such guru, like, you know, Muslim sir. They say we follow Muhammad sir. Now, if Muhammad had said anything, it is that don't drink, is the thing he said. But I have yet to come across a Muslim who doesn't drink. They may not drink in Riyadh because they will be killed there. But if they come to London, they drink. Actually, when my husband went to Saudi Arabia, they said, you are the only Muslim we have ever come across. It's true. Whatever is said to them, they do just the opposite of that. At that time there were no cigarettes, no tobaccos, so he didn't say about that, so they have found a loophole. Muslims smoke, doesn't matter, because Muhammad Sahib never said that. Muhammad Sahib had to take another word to come as Guru Nanaka to tell them, Oh God, now you are smoking, the, this horrible thing has come, now you don't smoke. But who will accept that Nanaka and Muhammad Sahib, we are the same thing, no difference. Same thing it was. We can prove it in Sahaja We can prove it. How important it is that we should know that they were all the same and that they stood for the same thing. But at a period, now today you have got ganja, I don't know the names also of all these things, what you drink and smoke, God knows what. Human beings are really clever to get everything that can destroy you. It's like call a bull, come and hit me. It's like that. If there's not a bull, then you like ask a buffalo, come and hit me. Now there's no buffalo, all right. You ask an elephant, come and stamp it me. It's like that. Human beings are so stupid. So now supposing I say, if I write down the list of all the things that you drink and smoke, I don't know how many things there are in this world, then you'll find out the third thing when I die, that Mataji didn't say this one, so we should. Very intelligent. All the time destroying your central path and nicely managing through that. Is this the way are you going to go to God by any chance? Is this the way are you following the great incarnations who came on this earth? So the balancing comes through Navi and Navi looks after you and teaches you how to be. For example, now your left Navi is Gralakshmi. Gralakshmi is the deity of the household. But if you are too much outward type, you are running a madras, say early in the morning you get up, read the newspapers, is again Sahaja Yoga again. Not to read newspapers, 
in the morning time. You can read it in the night, but not in the morning, because if you read it in the morning, you get upset. And for this spleen has to pour in more uh, red blood corpuscles and it becomes mad and crazy. On the contrary, in the morning, talk to your wife, talk to your children, look after your Guru Lakshmi. The wife has to be also Guru Lakshmi, as I told you. Then you have your food properly, sit down and eat properly. But no, just after that, upsetting that Navi, you jump into your car, taking your breakfast in your hand, eating on the way, honking at people, getting angry with them. The wife is calling, come along, you had no breakfast, nothing doing. You are on your way on a special work. You end up with leukemia, at least minimum of minimum, if not with heart attack. Leukemia comes from left Navi when your Graha Lakshmi is ruined. The deity of Rahalakshmi is Fatima B, the daughter of Mamansa. While the daughter of the sister of Nanaksa is on the left now, left vision. We'll see that. Nanaki. Now this aspect of life you never think about. When you get leukemia, then you will come to Mother, please cure me. And if you are rich, you will see to it that I cure that person. If I don't cure, you will sit on my head. You will bring ten cars on my head, unless and until I cure your field leukemia. But if I tell you, my son, you take it easy. Life is not for making wretchedness out of you. What have you gained out of all this running about? Nothing but this horrible left lobby by which you are suffering, your family people are suffering, only person who has gained is the doctor or the doctors or the hospitals. They won't listen. And you know leukemia is such a fast developing disease of cancer that one can pass out within one, one month. Doctors will tell you, at the most you will live for one month, that's all. They will take all the money to give you this certain but why have that? Be patient with yourself, be kind to your Navi, look after your God. All kinds of diseases of the stomach come from this imbalance, this way or that way. All these great gurus came on this earth to give us balance, to teach us balance and tell us, don't do this and don't do that, all the Ten Commandments. But to us, these Ten Commandments have no meaning. Now I'll t touch a point which is very important today for you people to understand about non-vegetarianism and vegetarianism, because this subject I wanted to handle. Because if they are vegetarians, they can't bear to see that Mother says it doesn't matter if you are a non-vegetarian. Because it doesn't go against your awareness. It does not. Drinking does. Drinking does go against your awareness, but not eating meat or not eating meat. But one has to understand. Now somebody told me that in Gita it is written that uh, those who eat meat are, je are the, uh, tamogunis. I am surprised at Gita itself because Sri Rama, uh, Sri Krishna himself in the very beginning has told Arjuna that you should go all out to kill all these people. Even your relations kill, actually kill human beings. Your relations and your guru also is to be killed, because I have already killed. Nothing is going to be killed by you because they are already killed. And he gave so many explanations that it should not be done. But he said, no, I tell you, you have to go and kill. Surrender yourself to me and I tell you. So how did he preach this ahimsa? I just don't understand in Gita. Now this seems to be a new introduction that the people who eat are tamogunis. They are not. They are never. They are rajogunis. If you eat meat, you become rajogunis, not tamogunis. 
The Mahabunis are the people who eat carbohydrates. We have seen it in Sajo. You have two types of diseases. One is lethargic organs and one is, uh, one is active organs. So those who are lethargic, having more, too much carbohydrates in them, and those who are overactive are having too much proteins in them. I mean, if you take proteins in the science, scientific way, will you become lethargic? I mean, ask any doctor. And then the doctor says, Gita is all humbug because it doesn't understand what it is saying. And while you say like this, that we must follow Gita, I think somebody has gone wrong there and has written something wrong in Gita, as they have written in Bible, they have written in every book. I'll tell you what they have written wrong in Bible later on when it comes to Christ. I think they, 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 just some people have put it there just wrong. Of course, if you eat too much meat, you get Rajogunis. Then Rajogunis become, as I have told you, right-sided people become very aggressive and they become ahankaris and they can harm. But the people who just eat grass can become lethargic, absolutely lethargic. They will have lethargic heart, if not active heart, they will also get heart attacks. And they will have lethargic intestines, by which they will get tremendous all the time, passing out of the stools, they will never be able to digest any food, they will be very weak people. So those people who have a lethargic heart or a lethargic, uh, what you call the, a lethargic uh, liver or lethargic intestines should take to proteins. I am not saying meats, but proteins. But a vegetarian doesn't take so much proteins, it's easier to take meat, there's no harm. But those who are active, people should take more to vegetables. It's sensible. Guru Nanaka ate all the meats, was a bad man. These Marwaris who are supposed to be absolutely abstaining from even from lesson and pyas, was he worse than him there by any chance? What about Buddha himself? He ate meat because he died of eating raw meat himself. Only thing you should not eat the meat of animals which are bigger than you and not of a cow which is an Indian cow, especially Indian cow. Also bigger cows are not good because they give you a problem on the teeth. But smaller animals, even when I, I read Jaina, Jainism, they said that uh, the, you must say uh, the bullocks, the cows, and you must say uh, other animals, but they never said you must say uh, goats and you must save chickens because Mahavira knew we cannot give realization to chickens. What is the use of saving chickens and mosquitoes and also bugs? Of course, they are doing like that. Some Jain people save bugs and put it on a human being and uh, they <laughs> take the blood of those human beings and they are paid for it. It's absurd, but they do it. For them bugs are more important than human beings. Billions and billions of bugs cannot make a human being. All these absurd ideas we have in this country. So when I say you have not to be a vegetarian or non-vegetarian, you have to see what you need and eat that. But all the time your attention is in food itself is wrong. So there is no good in you people getting into these problems of vegetarianism and non-vegetarianism. Of course, in the Western country people should take to vegetarian food, not absolutely, but more than what they have, while the people who are in India who are vegetarians will have to later on take, otherwise they'll have lethargic heart, I'll cure them once again they will have problem, then they will have to go for a bypass save money there, you cannot. You will have lethargic intestines, then you will have lethargic liver, you will have all kinds of, uh, what you call, uh, cirrhosis or maybe on the hand you might get all kinds of uh, rashes and things like that, allergies. 
all these problems will come. And then ultimately such people look so peaceful because, you see, they, they are like cabbages, is they? Yeah. If somebody is like a cabbage, then how do you give him a realization? You can't give realization to cabbages, can you? We have to have here chivalrous people, brave people, warriors. We have to fight the evil forces. And what can these people who are cabbages going to do for it? One has to understand the yathart, the reality, and not to put your conception, because you are born in a Jain family and that's why you want everybody to eat grass is wrong. Is wrong. The one who has to eat protein must eat protein. Now what is the food for sattvic people? That much. You can't live with it. So what I eat? Chana. Can you live with chana? It's protein. Chana, or you can eat meat, but not very heavy meats, lean meats, and ghee. And what I eat the most is honey. That's my food. Honey I eat, you know that. Honey I drink. That's. But you can't live with that, can you? <coughs> so you have to eat little carbohydrates, it doesn't matter. But you balance yourself in knowledge. But there should be no attention on food at all. Actually, if you ask me what I ate in the morning, I won't be able to tell you. Really. I'm very bad. Because I have no attention on it. Whatever one gets, eat it and you don't feel like eating, don't eat it. What's so important is to enjoy every moment of your life. If a person is finicky about food, especially Indians are, it's very dangerous for Navichak. Because those who are mad after food and about Navichakra are extremely hot tempered, I think, and I don't know the word in English is, but in Hindi we call it chik chide. Angraji me kya kate? Huh? Irritable. Irritable. And these chilchidas will make their wives' life miserable. They will come and tell, in that house I ate very good karilas. <laughs> so that poor lady is running after the karilas. We Indians are so much food by them. You can't imagine, they won't believe we are supposed to be starving people. But we are so food minded that once there was for these Bengalis, supposed to be Bhuka Bengalis, I must tell you about that. They had no fish, rohu fish, which they get it from the central India, and people couldn't get fish, so they were starving. So Bombay people very graciously sent one shipload, because I know that I was a part of it, to them as a gracious act that let the Bengalis eat the fish. They said, what? We are not going to see fish. We are Bangladeshis. Threw all the fishes in the See, it all became sadhana and it was thrown into the sea. Can you imagine? Nobody will believe in the West. This is how we are fasting and that is how we are poor people. Can poor people afford to throw away one shipload of fish in the sea because they want rohu fish? We are so food-minded that our nabi is always like this. And our women are to be blamed because they know how to control their husbands, they have spoiled them. There, the job of a woman is to be a Grahalakshmi, to have ideas before the family, ideas before the husband, ideas before the children. The house should be ideal, should be a warm house where everybody is welcome. The wife's job is to keep her nabi all right, the nabi of the children all right, and the nabi of the husband and nabi of all the people who come to her house. 
She has to lead a life of auspiciousness, of kindliness, of religious nature. She has to be a soft nature being. But this is all missing. Only thing she's worried is how to please the husbands, because that's one of the big jobs for her. So to keep our Navi all right, we have to understand that Sir Jogis, that we have not to pay so much attention to them. That doesn't mean you eat all dirty food. But it definitely means that when you eat your food, you must see the vibrations of it. You must always give vibrations to the food. Eat the food which is vibrating. Certain foods, no. Supposing if I have to go and eat in any one of these big five-star hotels, next moment I'll vomit. I always vomit. If somebody invites me in a hotel, I start thinking, Baba, now what an ordeal. Because it is not cooked with love. That's why I say, Shabari ke be rakhai. He liked the little berries of Shabari. Duryodhanata neva tyago. Viduradhar Sadhaka. Iskamati. What does that mean? That means the love that is expressed in that food is what we should care for. And not for the lavishness, not for the show of it and not at all for your own taste. But the taste of food should be that it should carry love. Let your tongue feel the love. That is the best taste. And whatever is cooked with love always tastes very well. So when you cook, cook with love. When you eat, eat with love, with kind words to the person who has cooked with love. And above all, count your blessings. Count your blessings. And think of others who may not have had food today. This is the Lakshmi Tattva is, where the hand is like this, but it gives, and there's a hand where it gives protection to people who need money. But not in a way we do it, the way Americans do or Russians do. We do the way Lakshmi does, that this protection does not know the other hand. You give it without telling anyone, just because you have to give, you give. And actually you do that. If you have given, as my father said, one rupee to someone, run away from that person as soon as possible. With a speed of one mile, he said. But if you have given five rupees, run away from him at the speed of five hundred miles. It's very practical. That is how we have to be. This is the Lakshmi Tattva, is the Navi Chakra about which I have It's a very important chakra because today you are here because in your chakra Mahalakshmi Tattva was awakened, because you wanted to see God, because you wanted to come to God. You have not come here for money. You have not come here for anything else but God. Your seeking is in God. You want to know the truth about God and you want to have God. You don't want to put your ideas onto this but you want to see how Mother wants us to receive the blessings of God. So we come that as we seek the love of God, the grace of God, the Lakshmi has to be gracious. And the Mahalakshmi is the one who is the gracious lady, is the graciousness in you, the grace that must come evolve into a personality, where in that grace he feels the hankering of the Father. The Father, the Narayana, he wants to have his blessing.